Hey guys, it's MC Fixit here. We're gonna be working on installing a six inch LED light over this bath. Uh, make sure you're filling, fulfilling your local building codes and guidelines, because um, some places you can't do this, but I wanna put a light right up here because it's pretty dark in here and this is not even with the shower curtain. And so uh, we're gonna be running the power in a series. And uh, whenever the fan's on, we'll have light over the shower as well. So I'm gonna walk you through all the tools, the supplies, and the know-how on how to do this. Here are the tools and the supplies that I used. Uh, the first thing I wanna show you is uh, the exact model of what I bought. It's a Halo 6 inch. Uh, I like this one that has select what kind of color you want to come out of it. Um, and it's kind of one of like the plug and play is what I like to call it. So as you open it up, um, it already comes with the little box. Um, and then this just goes up and it kind of uh, just snaps into place, which is really nice. It also disconnects here quickly. Um, and so it does have an instruction manual. Uh, then also has the ability inside of here to flip to see what direction of color you want. So that's 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Uh, I like the 5,000 version, which is more of that daylight. So that's what a lot of my other lights in my house are. Um, so this thing works really well for this. Uh, it's kind of a quick mount. Um, and so we will definitely be using that. There's an instruction manual. Make sure to follow all of your local building codes and guidelines. So I did end up using a uh, 14.2 uh, Romex indoor. Worked really well. I did end up using a couple of these white um, plastic installator staples. Uh, sometimes call them nails. Um, I had to use a, a non-metallic push connector. These things go into the different parts. Um, and allow your 14-2 to not get split and uh, potentially electrocute you or something else or cause a fire. Those are really helpful, pretty inexpensive. Uh, I did use a little drill with a Phillips bit, a couple of screws, Phillips screwdriver, tape measure, um, and also a stud finder to make sure I wasn't gonna land on a stud. You want a couple of different variations of lights, uh, especially uh, up in the attic, get some that have just some push buttons or a headlamp or one of these really big LED bars, uh, all those are very helpful. Um, you're gonna wanna hammer some kind of drywall saw. And so this one works really well, really old, uh, but still very effective. Uh, I use needle nose pliers, wire strippers that have a 14 gauge on it, a Sharpie. Um, then I used a voltage tester just to make sure all power was off before I started touching anything electrical. Uh, you may need some wire connectors. This one did come with all the wire connectors I needed and I just reused the wire connectors that were in, that were in the uh, light already, the light fan combo. Um, you can also get these. These are my favorite if I do really any new wiring. I normally use these, especially if it doesn't come with anything. These are little Waco, they uh, just uh, slide in push down, they work really well. Um, and you can also add different sizes for how many wires you need. I really like those, but I didn't end up having to use them on this project, but I have in the past and it will continue to because I really like them. They're a little bit, I think, more secure than the old style wire connectors. That's my opinion, but you may have another one. I also used a four foot by two foot, half inch thick piece of plywood to lay down on the trusses. So I would have the ability to kind of sit or kneel wherever I needed to, to be able to do this project in the attic. Let's go ahead and jump into the project. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just go ahead and make sure that there are no studs up here. So it does look like there's one just about dead center, which is not really what we want, but uh, we'll have to deal with that. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and measure what center would be. So it's almost 60 inches. So let's just go ahead and call it 30 by 33. So I kind of want to keep it in line with the shower head. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little mark here. And then 30 inches, which would be just past it. 
that would be ideal. But again, we're going to go ahead and run back over. the stud finder and hoping we don't have a stud right there. Okay, so that's one side of the stud. That right there is the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that, that there's a stud there. So it may have to be off just a touch more this direction than the center of that which is fine with me um, as, le as long as it's not right on a stud so pretty much what that means we'll have this thing sit about right there so it'll be off an inch or two from exactly where i wanted it but i'm fine with that so inside the instructions i went ahead and ripped out this page um, you can use some of that electrical tape or if you have painter's tape and we're just going to put a couple pieces of tape on it and then we'll be able to tape this up top. So we're going to go ahead and stick this up. We are the uh, LTDM-6 on this and so it's going to use the full cut. Um, they do make a couple other models. And the beautiful thing about this is you can kind of put it right up next to where that stud is. You can almost see the mark through it. And that tape will help hold it up there so we can get a good solid cut all the way around it. This is where it is going to get messy. Um, if you want to put a drop cloth or something down in your bathtub, that is definitely a good option. Uh, I'm going to put an old blanket. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw this old blanket down. So it'll just help clean up a little bit easier a little later on. because we are going to get some stuff everywhere when we do this. If you don't have glasses on, safety glasses would be a good option right now too. So the first part is always the hardest, getting this thing started and in. We do have an R38 above us, so there is going to be some insulation that falls in. But you just kind of go with the sawing method all the way across this. And I am putting a little bit of pressure here as we get closer towards the edge because I'm going to push this up and through instead of letting it fall down. That should reduce a little bit of the overflow. So again, go ahead and push this up and over. You're still going to get some falling down in like that, but it did reduce a lot of that. So you can go ahead and peel back that. And so this is not going to be the final time we put this thing in. I just want to make sure all of it looks like it's going to fit good. And it is when we put that clamp up, that's going to fit perfect. And it might even just cover that. We'll see. Um, if not, I'll have to put just a touch of paint on that end. So the next step is to go ahead and turn off the power here. I am going to the breaker box. I could come just simply over here and turn it off, but I really want to make sure there is absolutely no power. So go ahead and go to your breaker box. Be smart about it. So now that you've come to your breaker box, you're going to look to find out which one it was. And so we're looking for a bathroom. And so I believe it's this one right here. So you're gonna move it this direction away from the center. So we'll go ahead and test to make sure that actually worked. So you can see that that actually did turn it off. That's my headlamp shining on it. Um, it did work and turned it off. You do wanna make sure you do not have power going to it. Head on over to your access point for your attic. So when you're in your attic, uh, be very careful to only step on the trusses. Uh, you can kind of follow these right here and know where to step, but we're going all the way back there in that corner. So right here is that hole, and uh, we're actually headed over here to the left. We are gonna have to dig around a little bit. So we are gonna have to dig around 
and uh, I found the outlet box I want to find. So let's go ahead and take this non-contact tester. We got no power going to it. That's exactly what we wanted. So now that that is pretty cleared out, uh, we can go ahead and unscrew it. And so there is one Phillips screw right here holding this in. I'm not gonna take it all the way out because I'm gonna do it with my hand the rest of the way to make sure I don't lose it down in this stuff. And then we can go ahead and pull this out. And this will get us access to these wires here. And that's exactly what we want. Put that screw in a safe place. So I'm just kind of spreading out the wires so you can see the different ones that it has. So I went ahead and grabbed some wire and took it back to the hole. And I'm going to give myself about an extra six or eight inches. Wasn't certain how much I was going to need to be able to do this. So uh, now that you have this out, we're going to go ahead and uh, measure and cut about an extra six or eight inches uh, than what you really need. Uh, then in the center of this is that ground wire. And if you cut it nice and close in the center, it will just help strip and peel this back because that ground wire does not have any kind of insulation on it. And you can kind of just cut that and you have your three wires. So actually, I think I'm going to put it down in here and uh, we're going to go ahead and pop this one. I forgot a flathead downstairs and so this should work as well. This is just a pair of needle nose on it. And so we can go ahead and discard that. We'll go ahead and grab one of these and go ahead and push it into place. This will just help any wires from uh, getting twisted and potentially cut. I do want to make sure none of this stuff goes in here. And then on your things, you're going to look for the 14, which is about halfway up on your wire strippers. And go ahead and strip it. Number 14 again, go back and forth, and then just pull straight up and out. I do want to make sure none of this stuff goes in here. So you got to kind of keep that pushed back when you're doing this. You can go ahead and insert your wires down in and you want the kind of the jacket of it to go through just a little too. So it's through on the other side. And then we need to get the copper piece back up under here. So we'll work on that one first. And so that's a Phillips as well. We are just going to back it off a little bit. And then we'll just go ahead and take the end of this and begin to kind of curl it, which will allow us to put it underneath that screw. I don't think the camera angle on this is going to be very friendly, so I do apologize. Needle nose help a lot for this we need to get it around that ground screw and it's going to be hard to see just because of the angle of all of this oop i didn't push that in all the way that's okay though that actually might help me with that not being pushed in all the way yet. Getting this ground screw wire properly seated. So once you kind of get it close, you go ahead and start tightening it back down. 
just like so. You want that nice and tight. Uh, then we can go ahead and begin to push this up and through and into this. There we go. That one snapped in now. And so the black needs to go to the black. We'll go ahead and spin this off. And go ahead and get that one. And go ahead and spin it on. Just like so. You want to make sure these are really tight. And they will begin to kind of twist and tighten down on themselves and each other. Just like that. It kind of spun a little bit. We'll go ahead and get the white one on there. Same thing, you want to kind of get it to where all of them are the same height and just begin to spin it. You're just tightening them down, making sure no copper is able to be seen. And you just keep spinning it. And they should slowly start to tighten down on each other. Uh, then you can go ahead and stuff all this back in there just like so, making sure you're not pinching any of the wires. And this kind of goes down and under at the same time, locking it in place right there. And then you do have to find that screw. I ended up putting it in here, so I did not lose it. Because it is a small little black screw. Okay. So once you're in here, you're going to go ahead and take that Phillips screw, making sure no wires are out. And begin to screw it in. And you do want to make sure it gets nice and snug. You don't have to kill it. Uh, but it is nice and snug. And then the next thing I like to do is just go ahead and start filling back some of the insulation. Um, this stuff is intentionally this thick everywhere. So uh, just go ahead and kind of toss it on. This insulation is nice because it's not super itchy. Um, we will need to staple it down right here on that post, but we'll get to that in one moment. So it is important that we nail these down. And so you're going to nail both sides and have the wire coming through. So I just kind of tap it to begin with, and then I reach back and really hit it down on there. And that just helps it from moving. And then we'll do it one more time on the next one over here. So I'm going to go ahead and nail this down. Same thing like we did to the other side, but I'm going to go ahead and nail this down. And that will just keep it right where it needs to be. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of dry fit this box uh, so it's ready to go. So it has two little hooks on both sides. And so I want those to be here. So in case anybody does ever step on it, they're not going to hurt it. So I'm going to draw with my Sharpie the two little spots. So you can kind of see it there. Then we'll just go ahead and kind of dry fit it in spot. We'll obviously have to tack it down a little more before we finish. But then this thing will slide right down on top of that just like that and still give us access right down here into the hole as we do that. But first, we got a little bit of room that we've got to go ahead and tie all this together. So we'll start doing that now. So we're going to go ahead and cut about six inches worth of the wire. 
Make sure it's nice and straight of a cut, just like that. And we'll peel this back and go ahead and cut it just like so. And then you have all three of your wires right there ready to uh, put in the box. And we're gonna go ahead and take this side off. I really wish I would have brought a flathead, but uh, this'll work. And that will help expose this box and allow us to put the wires in. And when we go ahead and see the box, uh, it does have the ground, the common and the hot uh, all ready for you with little nuts on the end of it, wire nuts. So that's pretty awesome. We'll go ahead and push this in to this spot. And just like that, it is in right where it needs to be. And so the next thing we can do is go ahead and shove the wires in just like so. We will need to go ahead and strip them. So you go ahead and get your strippers and you're gonna go to that number 14 back and forth once or twice and then pull straight off same thing with this one go to the number 14 back and forth pull straight off and then we can go ahead and plug to the or the black to the black Oop, don't drop those down there or else you're gonna have to find new wire nuts and then white to white And then ground to ground. Just like so, give a little tug on each of them, make sure they're not going anywhere. This is a great opportunity to switch what you want, making sure you have that. And then you can go ahead and begin to put this on here, just like so. You can take your Phillips screwdriver at this point and go ahead and finish tightening them down making it nice and snug or if you have that drill handy you can also use the drill it's your choice at this point this was just right here Oh, I missed a little bit on this one. I thought it was behind it. I wasn't looking properly. So I'm gonna have to back that out a little bit and then make sure it's seated properly. Then tighten it down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bend this wire down just like that, kind of out of the way. And then this one up and over, this will allow us to have the ability to put this in properly from below. So I'm gonna go downstairs and it's gonna be dark when I do this, but my goal of this is to go ahead and press these up just like this up into the ceiling and it's kind of like a mouse trap. They snap down and hold it into place. And then I'll come up here and make sure it's exactly how I want it to be. So go ahead and plug this in. There is a little cutout dimple and it only goes in one way. And go ahead and twist that down nice and tight. And this is like that mouse trap that I was talking about. You want that little bit of foam. You're gonna press these in just like this and let it go in and up. and then making sure it's fit just like that. We are gonna go ahead and test it real quick before, um, before we go back up into the attic. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that breaker back on. After you're all done, you can go ahead and turn the power back on and test everything to make sure it worked properly. Hey. 
And so it works with that fan light. So when I turn the fan off, and that makes it so much brighter right there. So that right there is looking really good. I don't know how much you were able to see because of lighting, uh, but this thing has the ability to wiggle around a little bit underneath, which is not bad, um, but that is all set. Make sure you're tight down and you can go ahead and fill it back with the insulation so your house stays warm and cool when it needs to. And uh, just do that all the way around and we can go back down. So here is that final test. We'll go ahead and turn the light on. Works really well, super bright into here. You can see everything now. Um, obviously I have a lot of insulation, uh, but yeah, that's why you put that drop cloth down. But I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments, please go ahead and comment. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a great day and you're able to do this project yourself.